and welcome back to Allen High School's discussion of solutions at the pre-AP or 10th grade chemistry level. We're looking at in more detail the dissolving of ionic compounds in water. Now when ionic compounds completely dissociate into ions they've dissolved or you know if you said it the other way in order to dissolve they completely break apart into their ions. Now, they are not decomposing. Do not take apart your polyatomic ions. And yes, you have to still know your polyatomic ions or, well, we all know what happens. Okay, so don't dissociate them. Keep them intact because we're separating into separate ions. So they stay as their polyatomic ions. Now, when polar covalents dissolve, there's a force of attraction that is formed. There are intermolecular forces, but they don't dissociate into ions because by definition, they don't have ions, all right? For acids and bases, we break these into two categories. We have strong acids and bases, and you need to memorize these starting now. You need to know these strong acids and bases. And a strong acid and base dissociate 100%. And so we show a one-way arrow. That means it goes 100% to product. So a single arrow means proceeds 100% to whatever the products are that is written. And we use stoichiometry as our mathematics. Now, if, on the other hand, it is called a weak acid or base, and you'll know what it is because it's not strong and you've memorized your strong, they only partially dissolve. So we use a double arrow. A double, whoops, that's, that was a crummy double arrow. A double arrow means that they proceed to products less than 100%. And it won't be till towards the end of the year that we'll look at the mathematics of this. For now, we're just gonna teach you the concept that if you see a double arrow, it dissociates, it proceeds to product less than 100%. Now, I know this is going to seem really random, but we're going to use the symbol I to indicate the number of particles or ions that form when a substance is in water. So if it's an acid, base, or ionic, this is going to be simply equal, I will equal the number of ions that are present. So we can use the subscripts to determine our number of ions. If it is covalent, so if I take one sugar, C6H12O6, and if I take a solid sugar and I put it into water, I still get C6H12O6. And it's now aqueous or attracted to the water. So if one solid is there, I get one aqueous, and so I is equal to one in that case. So whenever it is a covalent solvent, I is equal to one. That's kind of the take home there. So let's look at how we write these equations. So you have a chart in your notes. We're gonna write some of these. I don't know if I'll do every single one of them, but we will write quite a few of these. And so one of the things you want to be able to do is classify, classify, classify. Uh, nitric acid is kind of clear, it's an acid. Acids by definition are soluble in water. And so we would write the dissolving equation. Nitric came from nitrate, so we have HNO3 going into water and it's strong, so it's going to go 100%. So I would get my H plus aqueous, and I would get my nitrate aqueous. So we're looking in this example as if we've got pure liquid nitric acid going into water. I'm not showing the water right now. We will do that at a later time. You notice that I have two ions that form here, all right? Now, if I have sulfurous acid, yes, this is also an acid. Acids, by definition, go into water. Sulfurous came from sulfite, and I get H2SO3. Since it is a weak acid, I'm going to use a double arrow. And I'm just going to take the first H plus off.
and I'm going to put H S O 3 minus, all right? And I is actually going to be probably less than 2 on this one, all right? So less than 2. Strontium hydroxide is ionic. Uh, it is a strong base, so yes, it is soluble. So strontium hydroxide, group 2, so it has two hydroxides with it. Since it's a strong base, it goes 100% to strontium ion plus two hydroxide ions. And that gives us one strontium plus two hydroxides for a total of three ions that form. Lithium phosphate is ionic. All group 1s are soluble without exception, so yes, it is soluble. So I have three lithiums and my phosphate. So if I took that solid, we're not showing water in these. We're showing the dissolving in water. It's not reacting with water, so I'm not showing it as a reactant. I'm going to get three separate lithiums. So do you notice that the lithium ions separated from one another? So that subscript became a coefficient. I have, whoops, I have three separate lithium ions. Sorry, my hand was going fa too fast there. Okay. And it's group one, so it's plus one. And then I have a one phosphate ion. So all these ions like swim away from each other. And I would get an I equal to four. Three lithiums, one phosphate. Calcium sulfate is ionic and it is not soluble in water. It's one of the exceptions to sul uh, sulfate solubility rules. So it's not applicable. There's nothing we can say about a dissociation and there's nothing we can say about I. You could call it zero if you wanted. Um, it doesn't go into solution so there are zero particles that form. Magnesium chloride is ionic. It is soluble. And so we're going to put magnesium chloride. If we dropped some solid magnesium chloride into water, so we're adding it to water, it would separate into one aqueous magnesium ion. Sorry, I missed the aqueous above. I'm just kind of go running out of room. But the ions are considered aqueous. And I would get two separate they, like, they get into water and they swim away from one another. Aqueous chloride ions. And I would be three, one magnesium plus two chlorides. Okay. Hopefully you are getting the idea of this. Let me just do a um, couple, maybe one more. Let's look at ammonia. Ammonia is covalent. It is soluble in water. So we would have pure ammonia would be a liquid. So if we took liquid ammonia and we put it into water, we get aqueous ammonia. It is attracted to water, but there are no ions uh, for dissociation. So we keep it intact. We have one ammonia that went into solution, so I is equal to one. All right. Methane is covalent. It is not soluble in water, so all of that is not applicable to methane, right? So hopefully you get the idea of how we write these solubility dissociation reactions, and I will be available to help you in class, and I have a few tricks up my sleeve to help you out if you are not understanding these, right? So until then, this is, as always, your, I hope I, I'm your best chemistry teacher because I'm your only chemistry teacher. Hopefully I'm becoming your beloved chemistry teacher. Love you kiddos. Talk to you soon.